recording in progress. <laughs> recording. But the host left. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Those the with most <laughs> in the multi universe. What? Multi universe. <laughs> Yeah, damn it. Now, now we're gonna get sued by Marvel. Son of a <laughs> They don't well, own the term multiverse. We just gotta you know, over. You know, why you just sit on her shoulder? <laughs> you know, if you say the word Earth, you don't get sued by the BBC. The Mark has nope. come a long way from his terribly botched intros as of episode three this year. I am your new host, Alex Kalusdi. <laughs> Although I am not the host because host is in this home. It's the Kuligowski family. Oh well, thank you. Okay. We ready? Yep. Places Hello, everyone. Places. Listeners, and welcome to a special episode of Panelists Favorites. This is our final of the year, and this is the panelists' favorite albums of the year. Now I know. Beyond Your Radio has its own. And let me just explain a moment that while I do listen to as many records as possible, and I brought my panelists in on genres and wonderful musical experiences and shitty music experiences that scared the hell out of them and sent Deb into rehab. The, Dang it. The idea is this. <laughs> no matter how much I love you and your opinions do matter, it's my show and Beyond Your Radio's top 23 albums of 2023 kind of have my staple on them. Although I think tonight you might find some equal uh, as mine are finally coming out, where today was number four, so I only got uh, three, two, and one left. So on the panel tonight, all the way from Hawaii, sitting in on the panel, the grateful dude, and he is sporting a lovely Bill's shirt, and that has a buffalo chicken wing on it. It's amazing looking. He's going to wear that all week long. I'll be oh, modeling, okay. modeling this. Ew. So, okay. Yeah. Like early seasons, he's to not his, shirtless. To his right, in his brand new Hawaiian Beyond Your Radio shirt. And you too can get one too if you become a panelist. It's only $135 and a <laughs> small check to Jeff Johnson. No. Alex Kaluzny, thank you for joining us and eating us out of chicken wings at home. It's got a flamingo because he's Polish. I don't it's think those two are mutually It's true. It's true. It's, it's true. It's true. Polish. Yes. Okay. Speaking of the person who knows, Polish and flamingos go together. Damn! Deb Armitage Hicks Maloney. And if you've been following, she did her homework, you know, so this is going to be... I did. She did it. And and then then again, she needed me to give her my phone so because she didn't remember the five. Yeah. Okay. She was a D student. I and <laughs> the, the, my favorite panelist of all, who <laughs> opened the show that, and we're never, we're going to get sued... <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, great. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you. Hey, when that happens. Now, joining us on the other side of well, the world. The world, yes. The continent. <laughs> Our favorite panelist, the one who's getting us all the attention. Oh, yeah. That's me, you guys. <laughs> he wanted to be here, but we couldn't get him in a suitcase. <laughs> nope. I tried. <laughs> Duffel bag wouldn't fit. I tried. He's not the size of a carry-on. I tried telling everyone that. <laughs> and of course, I know, I know. And of course, my best man, Jeff Young, from lovely Tampa, Florida, and he will be getting on a plane in a few hours from now because he's going to be sitting here as well for the meal to music, which in actuality is cooking. Well, was cooking. No, still is. Yeah, I can we've smell. been cooking for hours. We can smell. Yes, did yes. the circuit breaker? Onion jam. Yes, and we've had circuit breaker issues. So if we all go. <laughs> Ah, uh, you'll know that uh, it's not been a good day. <laughs> anyway, five albums. I I do not know what they've chosen. I'm I'm anxious to to see, but I I do believe that we have influenced them to to, to a small degree. Now I don't think you know the the ladies are going to start your sleep token love, but we'll <laughs> see. I, I'm my fingers are crossed. My fingers are crossed. All right. So without I'm further ado. Getting... Where's he going? I, he's probably going to get a beer. Oh, wait, there's going to be a beer. All right. We, we're going to start with Did he Everett. <laughs> Everett, you Everett. get to start off number five. I'm going to take a seat. Oh, boy. Okay. Let's, let's make sure I have my list up somewhere. Okay. For number five, I had to go with an album that I looked at and was one that when I did the review of, I was extremely sleep deprived after a 20, like 12 hour flight. 
So I'm going to go with Chronicles of the Kid by Aaron Young. Is that it? Yeah. Out of all the albums I listened to this, this year, it was the most rock and roll, blues, kind of Led Zeppelin inspired one, which is just something I don't feel like I hear a lot of anymore, which, or, you know, a lot of generally. Unless, you know, you have to dive back and look into it specifically. And overall, it was just a very fun experience. A little bit samey, as I said, throughout the whole thing. We're still <laughs> waiting for that samey t-shirt, Mark. Gosh darn yeah, it. It's got, hey, we, listen, we're working on it. We, You know what? We didn't, we were still arguing about how to spell samey. <laughs> S-A-M-E-Y. E-Y? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep, okay. Or with an I at the end. Well, okay. Here's the, here's the, here's oh, the, here's the oh, truth. Oh, oh. It came in the mail. And it said, shame me. And uh, I was <laughs> shame me. <laughs> oh, God darn it. So I'm going to put I'm going to put Chronicles of the Kid as my number five. And I'm going to have it short and sweet because everything I have to say about it, I already said. And I'm yes. just being, you know. Awesome. All right. Good job. Yeah. Well, excellent choice. Let's go to the Grateful Dude. Numero five. Numero five. Well, we're going to go with somebody I've seen many times. He's always on my favorite list. A lot of critics didn't like this uh, album. I did. This is Van Morrison, Moving on the Skiffle. Mm -hmm. Skiffle is a uh, type of uh, uh, music that comes, comes from uh, New Orleans and in in Southern. I love the album. I really did. I've listened to it so many times this year. I, I loved it. I think it might even be one of his best. But I might get people throwing snowballs at me <laughs> or something like that. But uh, I really believe that this is um, this album is is Van Morrison. I mean, it's pure pure guts, Van Morrison. Would you would you say it speaks to? I mean, that was he is he New Orleans guy? No, he's he's Irish. Okay, but I thought right. Skiffle. That's what the Beatles played with Skippo. No, no, yes, they did. No. I will oh. challenge you, and it's Irish. I will. <laughs> I that's a that's a challenge. I know what. Okay. You, yeah. I know what you're saying, but it's the different Skippo. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, Skiffle. more than one Skiffle around here. So when you when you loved it, is it because it brings you back to New Orleans when you were there, and, and possibly that? But no, I just like the music because it's different. It's not. It's not rock. No. Mm -hmm. It you know it's not New Orleans. It's like everything fused together. It's just wonderful. I mean, if you ever wanted to listen to an album that's just going to like, what? You know? Hum. The one hum one. To. Can you hum? Hum. No. <laughs> oh, so we, hum it. we don't want to get blocked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, Sorry. Like that sounded like an Agata de Vida. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. So rest. Uh, on, the on. Skip, on the Skiffle? What's it called again? I moving on, moving the on the Skiffle. That's right. Yeah. It's a double album, too. Right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Alex, I'll let you go next. Yeah, my number five was In Times New Roman by Queens of the Stone Queens Age. Queens of the Stone Age. I thought that was probably one of the more complete albums that I enjoyed of theirs, personally. Um, and obviously love the little touch between the lyrics being as well as they are. And then on top of that, the creative bits to the titles on as well on that album and and how they all kind of play off each other mm -hmm. a little bit so um one of the more creative lyrical queens of the stone age albums for me i've always enjoyed their music in bits and pieces this one was a full album i could swallow down from them and i thought this was one of my one of my favorites uh of them so definitely had to crack the top five this year for sure little little lyrical um tongue-in-cheek yeah playing words yeah um, oh my god i'm not gonna come up with a song now mm. it's like the Oh, it's terrible. Emotion sickness, are you thinking? Because that was the one that caught me. Yeah, but there's, there's, there's another one that's playing. Like, um, right. uh, if I had what? The opening lyric of emotion sickness. So yeah, they're all like a play of words. You could hear yeah. them wrong. And, and it, yeah, it's a great, it's a clever album. A lot of bass trick. Because I mean, the cleverness, Josh, the cleverness of them is what play. caught me. Because that, that's not usually their gimmick. Mm -hmm. Usually they just have good catchy songs or, or the lyrics just can fit whatever they're feeling. But this one was... Very well thought out and detailed. I've so actually seen them. Play on word like, um, excuse me while I kiss this guy? <laughs> well, sort of. Like that? Bring Not miss her lyrics. Bring up, uh, can you bring up um, just the album? And I'll, I'll tell you the name. It's The name of the song is, it'll. it's it's a plan. Yeah, I mean, obscenery <laughs> paper. Oh, yeah, in, in the obscenery. In scenery, obscenery. Uh, great, great lick. Yeah, great lick. Got it. Play on. Straight I, jacket fitting being a title mm -hmm. and what the people say and... Yeah. 
What does the people say? Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yes, Young, what do you have at five? I struggled with five. I wanted to say the Rolling Stones, but I started listening to that too late. So I'm going with the Foo Fighters, but here we are. The Foo Fighters, to me, they always have <laughs> at least a third to a half of their album that aside from the maybe the two that jump right out at you the songs you know half their album is going to grow on grow on you like they just they just are that band that their songs will grow on you and uh, grow, I, on you? <laughs> grow on you oh. no he's unsubscribed wow. you can edit that out later but um on, yeah dude. so they're just, they're just good they're just it's a good it's, good. it's just good so I, I know it's gonna i know i'm gonna like it more and more it's good Yep, it is. That was almost going to crack my top five. And the only reason it didn't was just because the mere merit I was going to put it on was it was good to see them get back on the saddle again. Mm -hmm. That was the entire reason I was going to say this was more of an album of less about the substance that was within it and more about it was good to see them release something and see that they're not they're not over given what they've yeah. done. So I think that was more so why I was going to give a merit on it. Um but it's good to see it crack someone's list because I was hoping it would. Immediate deduction for album cover. Anyway. Okay. I thought that wasn't a thing. I can't read it. Oh. It's all white and the lettering is white. I, well, I think somebody said in one of our shows there wasn't a band that was going to go, oh, Mark said that the album cover sucked and I better revisit that. Hey, so. you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're looking through, what's that? Beatles white album? I already have it. I already have that. <laughs> sure. Hey, Weezer made a killing off of just single colored albums. Yeah, they okay, did. Yeah. They did. They did. And one called Teal, for God's sakes. Yeah. I'm just waiting for Weezer Beige or something. Weezer, Weezer Beige. beige. Yeah. yeah, I'm just yeah. waiting for their partnership with Sherwin Williams. <laughs> Good afternoon. There we go. An entire paint line to Weezer albums. That's <laughs> funny. Deb. Oh, well, mine is just so weird, but I had to do it because it's all in our face. I did Taylor Swift. Um, is it 1989? The remake, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and and I don't even like her. I I mean, it's not that I don't like her. It's just that it's all in her I face. I know her entirety. <laughs> I, I just thought it'd be interesting to see everybody go. Oh, you're trying to be cool. Yeah, I'm. You cool. mean like I just did? You know, I'm gonna marry her now. Um, I will. definitely am not doing that. I'm just intrigued by the empire that she's been able to create. It's not easy to do, and it's not it's not on somebody else's merit. She's talented. She can perform. She can write. She can dance. She's got a great group around her, whatever they are. And I will say, I will say that uh, 1989, that record, I didn't start listening to it until I listened to Ryan Adams cover the entire 1989 record himself. Really? So when you have an artist of his character, mm -hmm. well, that's probably not a good word. Caliber? The, of his thought process, singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. because he's Ryan Adams and he hates Brian Adams, mm -hmm. oh, okay? Right. But he liked this Taylor Swift mm -hmm. album enough to cover because his daughter had been playing it and playing it. And he's like, I can make this into something. Yeah. And he did a very nice job is so I went back and listened to hers and that she's got a new version of it and yeah she's times person of the year yeah so apparently For what that's worth I'm, yeah. well I'm yeah. just influenced by I work with a lot of people that have kids mm -hmm. that are between the eight ages of eight and 18 mm -hmm. and she's making a statement and like Sue mentioned earlier tonight she's the Madonna of that era mm -hmm. and I think that it will be remembered yeah, I've gone on the record of saying that it's not her music that I dislike. It is the publicity the in which we, we are yeah. seen of her yeah. in a constant moment. I but, agree. But the thing that I, I get why she's doing the remakes, for me, it's also a sense, though, of I, I don't know if it's how she's releasing them. That they're all coming so quickly. So it's a little and, and it's yeah. and now it's saturation. And now yeah. it's just feeling like we're getting thrown remakes of all of Taylor Swift's albums because there's been what not only 1989 this year, but there's been three or four of them yeah. now. Yeah, right. and and so yeah. I feel like we're just getting too much of the remakes. Yeah. Whereas I get why she's doing it, and I think it's a great idea. But then you're going to hear so much of them so quickly, and now all of a sudden you compare them to the old, and 
now you're even warping how you hear the new remakes to going, but well, is it really that much different? It's got some, but... But eh. everybody's talking about it. And I get so, that part. You know? so, it's like a therapy session. It is. Okay. Taylor, Taylor, I have nothing against you, but I just would like, after this year, you go away for a while. And, How's and that? Your next I'm thing. sure she's watching Maybe this show. Maybe even Sal should be allowed to just protest too much. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I know a guy who knows a guy. I'll make sure Taylor Swift sees this. Everett. Yes. Go ahead, Sue. <laughs> All right. So I also didn't choose the Foo Fighters. And I just want to say my five were chosen um, because I don't like to pick tops. And there are a million songs on that list. And albums. there <laughs> were really incredible albums. You know, three have already been named. But so I went with like in 2023, if I could have been in a bar and watching five bands, who would it be? Oh, I love that idea. So that helps it. That yeah. helps me to. Oh, I, I, know, I know three of them then. <laughs> do you really? You think you do? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. You don't. Okay. So the first one I went with is um, Face to Face by Suzy Quattro and KT. Oh, Johnson. Suzy Quattro. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I just I just liked it. I liked how they work together. I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. Their voices blend together. I think KT Tunstall is this quiet force that needs more exposure. I think she's very talented. Um and just the songs and the, the lyrics and the music and it all just works really well together. And um I will say <clears throat> if I have to be critical, there were some songs that I felt were maybe underproduced but i don't think that's their fault um and and it's still worth a listen and in person i think it would be great so that's awesome yeah suzy quattro a legend yeah uh, absolutely one of the best female bass guitarists She's wonderful uh, uh, well well put together yeah. and i i the minute you said that five i i figured you were going she was going to be mentioned so I, I am not involved in the show from a standpoint of uh, because my list is already going on. I'm going to make some honorable mentions, odd albums. Honorable. You know, if if Adorable. you really want to get in into something crazy or off off the cuff, Avkarvist, A V K R V S T. It's like a Poland device. has had a magical year in music, I tell you, and this so new. this. Very, Mark. very hard rock blues crash metal band is is ginormous. Uh, but I don't recommend it to everybody. But if you're really willing to take a step off a ledge, that's a good ledge to start with. And if you're not willing to take a step off the ledge, at least try like you're in the script spelling bee to say the to spell the name yeah. of that. Yeah, I love a good I love a good spelling challenge. So it's like Cruz Chica. All right, why can't I remember that? The, oh, Approbation is the name of the album. Approbation. Uh, back to you, that. Mr. James. Okay, for my number four, this is an album that I'm kind of, I kind of funny what happened with it, is we were originally supposed to do an album review of it, the whole group, but due to scheduling mishaps and whatnot we didn't and mark ended up just doing it as a saturday thing i think it was and that is yeah. sleepwalker by louise what was her name parker, mm -hmm. parker yeah. louise parker yeah that was an album that i listened to once and was immediately kind of like hooked i was like wow that's different like not different like I've never heard, you know, not like, yeah, that's definitely different, definitely different, not a bad different, but a different that grabs you and just kind of like starts shaking you, like shakes you and say, are you listening? Do you get this till the album's over? That was just there were so many good fun songs on it. Yeah, so many good fun songs on it. You know, the pirate one. It's been a little bit since I've listened to it, but the pirate one was fun. It very much had that like emo girl. I've, Everything sucks and I'm depressed vibe to it. Yeah, black nail polish, you know. Black nail polish. But it, it wasn't just that, which I think really saved it. Because if I had to listen to 45 minutes of that, I would have turned <laughs> into an emo girl too and thrown myself off a bridge. Oh, that'd be, that's a new show. That's a show for 2020. Music that turns me into an emo girl. What? <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So 
I'm going to put that as my number four. I was kind of sad we weren't able to do it as a show, but I liked I it. I now, too, because I had to do I it. I can't wait to listen to My Chemical Romance with you next year. Oh, oh yeah. I'm That's scared. No. If you're uh, so so just, just, for the, just for the record, people, if you don't remember, we're not watching the shows the first time out. She is. Uh, she was with the band Baruch Assault. Yep. So, um, all right. Uh, nice. I think from there, we move to the Grateful Dude for his numero cuatro. And don't wor worry, Everett. I'm bringing all these people to Hawaii next year. So. <laughs> you hear that? And Our, next, next year's Tuesday. Gonna, gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> He's flying us to California only. We gotta swim our way across. We right. get okay. I know a cargo yeah. plane that can take you from San Francisco to somewhere over the Pacific. <laughs> so most of the, in fact, all the um, the uh, bands on this list are very dear and uh, near and dear to me. This one is one that I never had a good relationship with. I never found their music great. So when Ma Mark sent me the list of all the all the choices for this year, I decided to give this one a listen. I ended up giving it three or four listens. And I just liked it. Maybe I'm going to like more of their stuff in the, in the future or look more in their past stuff. Um, it's U2, Songs of Surrender. Ooh, the acoustic versions. And I found it beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I was... really did. Yeah. It, was, it was heartfelt. It was just smooth the whole way. I just like, what? It's just U2? Dang. Wait a minute, am I looking at the right album? Really? Yeah, Have we actually found a band you haven't seen live? Uh, you get three million dollars. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, never, never wanted to see them. I gotta get They're pretty great ones. live, I'll tell you. They were just not in my wheelhouse. And, I saw them. But I was very, very intrigued with this album. I thought the instrumental just was. And I don't know who he is. I'm sure Mark will. The guy that produced him, uh, they call him the Edge. Yeah, the Edge, he's the guitarist. He's, yeah, he's awesome. But he, he, I thought he was great. I really did. Well, I, and subdued too, because this is a more subdued record. Very so subdued. Yeah. Can't be out right. there. Right. Can't right. 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 Kinda, I, he's always been. There are guitarists out there, or, or, or guitar people who rank, and he, he, a lot of people despise him. They don't believe that he's half the talent he supposedly thinks really? that everybody thinks he is. But I think that's not true. It's a style of guitar and how he plays it. Mm -hmm. And he is all his own. There's nobody mock, you know, right. mimicking that that I'm aware of. So oh, I I, cool. I really, really enjoyed that. I was very, nice. very impressed with it. I might even go back and listen to older albums and stuff like that. The prior record. Um he, this is a companion. Actually, yeah, they've done three that have the yeah, same. Yeah, this was, but this is all acoustic. The other ones are not. They are more U two generated albums. Well, but the one prior has the something road, something road, and in, in, in yeah, it's really what, good. What's They're, interesting with this too is that record. of the four discs that are of this, they're each named after I assume a member of the band. When four is Bono and one is the right. Edge, so uh, mm -hmm. two being Larry, three being Adam. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I wonder if there's some sort of Thing that we're not following in the in the four disc set there if they got to choose the ones they want well, it was part of a four album set to bono bono's memoirs you know he um he did uh there was surrender 40 songs one story and now this one and then there so, was that song from the sing two movie no. yeah. <laughs> bono <laughs> was cash it in cash it in cash yeah. it in uh, do I go to Alex next? Yeah. Yep. Alex, you know. Yeah. So to no surprise, and I feel like we've beat this one like a dead horse a little bit in the last couple of weeks, but uh, my number four is Memento Mori by Hail the Void. <laughs> All seven of eight songs of it. There you go. What the hell is that first song going on? Huh? Um, I actually listened to that on my drive back from Rochester today. Okay. And, um, and that was a, a really... I forget how much, like I said, I think I compared it to what Deftones and mm -hmm. Alice in Chains and um, for a hard rock album like that, uh, it, it satisfied me to a way that I, this is one that I'm going to be listening to beyond 2023. So um, yeah, that's, nice. that's my number four, short and sweet. I love it. Mine uh, it. Uh, oh, no, it's no, Jeff that Young. Oh, it's Jeff Young. Sorry, yeah. I skipped. Mr. Young. This one I picked for no good reason at all i just picked it <laughs> i 
I wanted to pick it, and I picked the Camelang Crush uh, when the devil drives. So again, this is just because I love a Camelang Crush. It's not at all their best album ever, but thank God it took them 20 years to get back to doing music again, and I'm going to keep listening to it, and that's all I have to say. I, I, I say yep. this again, that uh, Kirst, who is the lead singer, he is as close you'll get to Michael Hutchins from NXS. Yeah, for sure. So um, that's that's a good, great quality. And m- much so, more so on this record, I started to realize more because there's a little bit more pop going on. In the- but they, I mean, kudos to him. He's a he's actually a nurse. I mean, the lead singer's a nurse. That's his, uh, you know, He's got a real that's job. That's his real job and he loves it, And but he does this on the that's side. Cool. for him, right? I like it. Deb. Oh, mine is Ren, Sick Boy. Ah, another, mm-hmm. another from the... That, and I have to say, I was influenced by the challenges you gave us. A couple of mine weren't... I wasn't part of the challenges, but that one I was su- completely surprised by. Um, I don't have a lot to say, but you know what? If you subscribe, you can look back at that episode and, okay. and see everything that I talk about for about 15 minutes. So I'm not going to repeat it, but... Um, I just found it interesting. I found it insightful for a young person that has gone through a lot already in his young life. Um, It came from a different place than many people at his age. And it was, like I said, it wasn't rap to me (laughs) in a offensive way that some people might feel rap can be. There was so much going on in that album. And I just found it very diverse and that i think we'll hear from him again so oh absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. definitely with the, the people that are giving feedback on that show yeah um, when i did uh, well actually i did the it was number 13 was it and that's my three. i i was playing it at 13 for reason unlucky number uh, yeah that, and the person says you have no idea how great that is at 13 and i'm thinking to myself that's why I put it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good catch. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah, it's, yeah. that's what I it, think. it is. Yeah, it's not for everybody, but it, it does have, if you're going to get into it, he has a panache. That yeah, he's, he it's does. All his own. Is it panache or panache? panache? By the way, Jeff, I picked you two for one of my Christmas songs last week. Yes, you did. Put it on. So, um, so this one, I'm probably going to say it wrong. Christine Ott, Eclat. A Clot. A Clot. Well, there's an S on it. Yeah, right? a class. Is the S silent? It is. Or it should oh, not be. Depends. Like, oh. uh, so it's got the X on the key. <laughs> sure, yeah. it does. Um, I'm just saying, it's got an X on the key. You don't want to believe me, that's okay. That's your thing. I understand. Look it up. Um, <laughs> what you, it sounds like Cartman <laughs> there. <Google>. Mark. <laughs> it sounds like Eric Cartman. Yeah. yeah I do yeah. that. No, he does. He does. Do you guys? I'm doing that. Uh, but it, it is a piano, it's instrumental, it's beautiful. Um, I mean, it's 2023, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that would say that everything on piano that could be done on piano has been done on piano, but it's it's just beautifully done, it's relaxing, it's not going to put you to sleep, or maybe it will, I don't know, but um, just a really nice job. Yeah. So. Excellent. Nice. Nice. That's a that's a somebody that really took their time oh, and not just I <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you an another honorable mention, but it's getting quite the mention on all the medias and some of the programs that are on YouTube that we uh love to watch. Well, I said me, we, whatever. Um, and that is squeaky feet. Cause for alarm. Take your grateful dead, put it in a prog blender. And just let it go because this this band is doing the obscenery and uh, it's it's excellent. I think if I would have been able to hear it longer, it might have it might have been able to crack into the twenty three of twenty three. But I didn't get it. It came out in the freaking end of November or first uh-huh. December, so uh, a little tough on that one. So for those of you artists who really give a shit about being on this list, start putting your albums out earlier in the year. Yeah, well, hey, you can put it on December, but but you better be a big shot. Yeah. All right. We know what that, that is. Yeah. Wait, that is it better, it better be the second coming of Prague God. Yeah, we know. I'm right. sorry. Is it too much work for you guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everett James number three. Okay. For my number three of the year, I am gonna go with 
an album that we did somewhat recently, and that is Orpheus Descending by John Mellencamp. Wow, all right. Wow, great yeah. I, like I said in that whole thing, mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. Southern rock, you know. I love the Eagles, like, they're, I, they're the only real rock band I've seen in concert. And Don and, Henley's in the Eagles, right? Yeah, Don, Don Henley, okay. Walsh, Just let's Block. that up. Right. So who again always wrong? Maybe it's still Alex. <laughs> so I'm kind of biased towards that. And I, it was a good album. You know, like I said in the review of it, the vocals are what they were both really cool in it and they added a lot of character. But also, I can't tell what the hell he's saying for half of it. <laughs> so there's. No. But the music was good. The lyrics were interesting. They were different. They were, you know, not just my dog died and I'm so sad, you know, kind of like super simple beating you with a dead horse lyrics. They were, you know, there was some nuance to them. They were, they, they flowed, you know, a lot better than some other things do. So for number three, I'm going to have to put John Mellencamp. I'm not going to lie, ever since you said beating you with a dead horse, I'm now picturing somebody having a dead horse and start beating you with it. And, and to make it worse, it's a mini one. A mini one? Oh, they're awful. That's they're right. Right. Red, it's not even considered a horse. It's a pony. They're nasty. No, they're not technically. But anyway, we won't talk about horses. Right now. <laughs> Mr. Dude. So my next album should probably not be on my list because... Oh. I don't know if it's the best album anywhere, but it has such some sentimental value. It's your list. These are favorites, not the best. Right. That's right. Because this is Neil Young with the Santa Monica Flyers somewhere under the rainbow. Yeah, 1977. I, 73. 73. Mm -hmm. I saw this one week. After this show was produced, but I thought it was a 2023 album. No, it is. It was released in 2023. Yeah, they never released it. Yeah. They just released it. Oh, this year. Okay. they've been doing I'm some listening. archive and bootlegs. So. I'm listening. And it's just, you know, Neil Young. I've seen him. I try to count the other. The they were going around. I think it's between 15 and 20 times I've seen. You're wow. you addicted. No, well, 300 yeah. times seen the dead is addicted. Okay. So, yeah. or or. Just mentally deranged, one of the other. <laughs> but we all go with the latter, don't worry. Yeah, here, here. Exactly. A little bit of both. It's just a great, great you concert. Know us, it's I mean, it was so, I can rem- remember to say, it was just boom, boom, pump. They never stopped pumping. It was really good. It was one of the best I've ever, if not the best I've ever seen. Nearly. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Need, okay. So my remembrance of, because I listen to the record. Uh, because I listen to every Neil Young record when it comes out, even this last one. Uh, it it sounded to me like he walked around the stage and decided what he was going to do. In some direction, right? Like, um, <clears throat> I think there's a playlist. I really okay. do. I believe there's a playlist, but they were they. I think they're all wrapped up in coke. Well, that's, they that's were, pretty, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, the the band was, um, hmm. of course, um, um. Neil Young, mm-hmm. uh, Nils Lofgren, Nils Lofgren right. but I've yep. seen him a few yep. times before. Great album this year, by the way. And Ben Keith, which oh, plays okay. the best mm-hmm. steel guitar I've ever heard. Okay. The guy is just incredible. Um, Billy Talbot, uh, yeah, which would uh, play bass. Yep. And then uh, Ralph Molina um, on drums. But uh, Basically crazy work. Yeah. Basically. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. It was Santa Monica Flyers, baby. But uh, oh, it was it was really a good show, and that's why that made this list. It's nice. It's a good, yeah. good Very choice. nice. Yeah. Good choice. Alex. Surprise. But Numero yeah, tres. Nice. Numero tres, my favorite dessert of 2023, the Luster Parfait. Ah, uh, Gord Downey and Bob Rock. Gord Downey. Oh, I will oh, say man. to this album, I don't normally pick out production and the amount that goes into it and you had to with this album just mm-hmm. given the timing um and not having gourd around and how much i think i mentioned back when i reviewed this they forefronted his vocals so much to this um maybe even sometimes to to maybe the demise of the album a little bit more over the music but i thought that this was 
phenomenal for a post uh, post release. I, I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. And um, this is one that became one of my favorites slowly and surely throughout the course of the year, obviously drawing back to the hit being one of my uh, Mount Rushmore of bands, I think for me personally. Mount Rushmore of bands. That it is a- for me, for me personally. I tell you what, panelists. We favorite. should all do that. Panelist we'll start favorite. Mount Rushmore. Yeah. So the, the Tragically yep. Hip is a staple and, and a and a cornerstone band for me in my musical influences. So to hear this gives me an opportunity to hear something from one of my favorites uh, in the afterlife. So my my favorite single of the year. Really. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, the moment is a wild place. Yep, that's it. Moment is a wild place because it is. It, it and nothing speaks more to that than his life and his. Mm-hmm. You know, and at the end, he wrote that in the, in the middle of a of being at that point. So it just is. You don't know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and yeah. Yeah. and and I think to that too. I mean, that in critical reception of this album for me, I didn't like a good middle chunk of this album, um, but that still still makes the list despite it. Yeah. There you go, Jeff Young. <clears throat> so I picked CMF two by Corey Taylor. I did so, not get to listen to that. How was it? As a fan of Corey Taylor and as a fan of Slipknot and as a fan of Stone yeah. Sour, which he is in charge of all three, yeah. I like this album because you get a little bit of all of those. And really? for me, as a fan of Corey Taylor, you get a little bit of all three bands in one album. You can't go wrong. So I like it. Um, I did not get a chance. All right. I'm going to listen. Yeah. I, I Stone Sour had its ups and downs. But his other band there, I like there, Slipknot. Slipknot had at the beginning. I remember first time people, so you got to hear this band. Didn't know I don't. A good number of tracks on there too, actually. Yeah, there's there's nothing on that first record that went no, I know. wow, and yeah. then then Iowa came out. I think Iowa was next, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I I picked up like wow, what a great looking cover. Uh, I gotta get it. put that on. And, no, <laughs> no, I can't. But then they came out like just the last two records have been amazing. The one was on my album of the year. It was number top five in the top five, if I remember correctly. Interesting. So yeah, a lot it grows. It, it, it grows on you. Tell you, it, it's shifting things, right? So I, I what I, I might have liked Phil Collins back in the day. Um, <laughs> just a little <laughs> just, bit. Just a little bit. But really, you mark I, but <laughs> stuck now. You know. Yeah, you know, wow, incredible. I I yeah, lately I and I I made this and I'm aware of it because it's a difficult thing when you're trying to do all these albums that I was starting to get doomy stoner rock sway. You know, I, I my mind and my whole ear was going over anything that Ripple Music was putting out or small records or um, I'm dropping names now and I'm going to forget people. They started to influence what I was listening to. I would have never come to Hail the Void without that, mm-hmm. right? And and yeah. other things, but I have to like now getting into Slipknot's a little bit easier. The growly voice thing, yeah, that's hard. It's still a little tough, like Abkervis. Yeah, that's true. Get 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 ready. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah good, good. And good I both pick say, Mr. Young. I I will go back and listen to that record. And to that point, to Corey Taylor, not for the same artistic ability, but for the same way he transcends throughout a bunch of different um projects i call him the chris cornell of hard rock okay i i would have made her kane maybe with his things that he does. for me it's just the differentiation of projects being able to have two separate bands on a solo stuff and then i, I that's how i kind of compare him is there anybody on that album jeff that's notable or no i didn't look i mean no not really he's got a couple of the musicians are from stone sour but okay. wow. is it Less well, we don't need a minute anyway. Good, good pick. I'll, I'll have to listen to it for sure. Is it oh, you, Deb? It's it me, you? but I'm revisiting mm-hmm. Everett's number five. What Aaron Jones Chronicles of the Kid? Nice, that what you, you that's what you picked as your number five. Uh, yes, that's my number three. All right, um, why are you making why are you rolling your eyes at me, Everett? No, not. I'm going, yeah, good choice, Deb. Okay, okay, I still love you. Good um, cover. <laughs> no, I love that album. Um, I will say it's because of Joe Bamamasa, Bamasama, Bana. Joe Bamamasa, you've yeah. been saying it right now. Um, I'm saying Bamasama, Makusa. There you go. It's like an Italian dish that I'm ready to eat up. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I just loved that album. I just thought it was, it's my kind of music. It, it just spoke to me. I didn't have any problem listening to it. Like it, it was just easy. It was just like it, I was supposed to listen to it and I really enjoyed it and I could listen to it over and over and over again. And it's the opposite reason why I picked Taylor Swift. It's totally so, opposite. it's so funny that you and Everett had that because, and Mark knows this, I was so high on that first album of his recent comeback that I loved. I didn't like this as much as that and it yeah. didn't make my top five, but I was so happy to see him come back out with another album. Yeah. And I'm not saying it wasn't, one that I liked, it just wasn't one that I put in the highest of his catalog. And I, to your point, I probably it's wouldn't so be able to mad. tell you what the other albums are. So that's <laughs> really my good. introduction to him yeah. as a whole album because of the show. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's, it's I might have heard a song. interesting to see it go backwards that way. Yeah, and and you see it go back into his catalog. Like, I, but... and I think that I didn't listen to Genesis at at uh, you know selling England by the pound. I started off at uh, at uh, Abacab. It's kind of like uh, oh Genesis. No, right? Duke. No, I was at Genesis was the first record I heard. Okay. That's uh, 1980, right? And, the, the, yes. That's all uh, illegal alien, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh this is great. Then you go back. What? Yeah, the so, rabbit hole. Yeah, see, I'm very curious. Totally different band. I'm very hole. curious how I would receive it if I heard it in the order that you heard it, as yeah. opposed to how I did. And vice versa. That's, that's why the catalog thing. review shows are great. Because yeah. I'm very curious when a person how comes into a band. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Do that. But I really liked it, Never. I was so happy that I, you know, I'm a really old lady and you're a young whippersnapper, and we like the uh. same. Yeah. <laughs> I try my whippersnappering hardest. <laughs> oh, whipper snapping hard. And it's not the samey. Yeah, that's right. No. Not the samey. Nope. <laughs> no, it uh, is, but it's not at the same time as what was great about it. Ooh, there's different double, versions of samey. Double samey. There's right. overly samey, there's all right samey, and then there's D there's good samey. Okay. Okay, good. So we're gonna have okay. the samey awards maybe next year. Yeah. Samey awards. <laughs> I don't I mean, know what the hell you are talking like, about. Like Boston, they would win the Sammy Award oh, every year. In Kansas. <laughs> Sorry. Sue, please save us. Sue. Okay. No, not yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> what is this? Which what? Number, number three, three, I think. Number three. three. All right. My number three is Angels in Science Fiction by St. Paul and oh, Broken Bones. Oh, yes. And I think if you haven't listened to the band yet, you're missing out on something that's in the works and up and coming. Um, the lead singer's voice is incredible. The, so for me, a lot of times you hear of R&B soul, and I don't understand why people are put into this category, but they actually pull it off mm -hmm. and not going backwards, trying to duplicate what R&B mm -hmm. soul was. They're taking it and making it like modern i don't know i don't know old new again i guess you know mo i hate modern it's just it's their sound um and it and it's it's just a great sound they're a great band um they're coming to buffalo but they're your tickets are expensive i'd love to come see you um yeah how much and where bucks. are they playing uh annie defranco annie defranco's church 80 oh, bucks when you were talking 80 about 80 yeah, yeah. But it's it's just it's I guess it's soulful, it's peaceful music, it's it's just good music. They're good, talented. I don't know if they're up and coming, but they're they're a good band. So start to see them now because I think they're going to be really hard to see very quickly. Um, just my opinion. And they were not introduced me to me by by Mark for once. No, that from my boss. So he got me on the train, and so thank you to Brendan. Thanks, Brendan. Yep. Yeah. Is he watching? I don't doubt it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another it. honorable mention from from me. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows who's, who Andrew Bird is, but he is a violinist. He's with the Squirrel Nut Zippers. If you remember <laughs> Health, uh, yeah, which is a true. great yeah. song, and uh, he uh, Andrew Bird has produced or has done total amount of solo records that have been amazing. But some of the most singing on and stuff, but this one, Outside Problems, because last year was Inside Problems. Oh. Uh, he did Outside Problems. The Outside Problems is, is a uh, instrumental, doing the funny things he does with a violin. And the, it, it, he's a virtuoso of 
weird proportions. He's uh, very funny. He's a very talented guy. And I, I, I do appreciate what he did. And I, I, uh, the Squirrel Nut Zippers were to get together and have a show that was under 80 bucks. I would go pay to see, uh, but they have to do hell. Uh, but anyway. I can't uh, say the name of them. Anyway. No, squirrel Nut Everett. Zippers. Everett. Numero dos. Okay. For my number two of the year, I am going to pick a album that is a little special to me as far as this show goes. And that was the very first album review I ever, ever did. Oh, my God. Oh. And that okay. is The Barnstormers. By the Barnstormers. Nostalgic I think just... crap. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Hey, hey, and... hey. Let's let the kid ass kid. <laughs> hey, come on, Alex. Get off my Mark face. likes it because it actually has a good album cover. Yes. <laughs> so I listened to that one and I liked it at the time. But a couple days ago, for no apparent reason, I don't know why. I just started singing one of the songs in my head. Oh, that's out good... of the blue entirely. And at that moment I knew this was something different. You know, I was like I kinda was like, okay, maybe I underrated it the first time. Cause it's been like two or three months since I've listened to it. And for no reason whatsoever, I just started suddenly going, working for the man, just like dancing around. <laughs> This is what I do. <laughs> I was like, so oh. my number two is going to have to be that one. Mark, that Ouija board you're telling me uh, I was working. For the yes. only reason to make Alex uh, mad that I'm going off of nostalgia. That too, if that helps. Uh, no, it's funny. I'm glad you brought this up because this is going to make my personal list. I was telling everyone here um, before the show, I have albums of 2023 that I need to go back to. And this was one of them on that list oh, that nice. I that I didn't I somehow passed it over amongst the other things we were doing and myself getting busy and caught up on stuff that um, this is one I, I need to go check out that I've been meaning to and, yeah, and had put off. So this made that list. So I don't think you brought it up. See, like I listened to it and because it was my first one, I was kind of nervous about it. I was like, how much do I have to pay attention to it? You know, I was like, do I need to be taking, you know, count of like octaves or something stupid? It's the first it's like the first time you take a test in college. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Sing it. Testies, testies. One, two, three. What? Oh. <clears throat> Why were you? What did you say? Jimmy, you said... uh, Jim Barnes is not well. Uh, he said they canceled tours and stuff. He yeah, actually got Why? he got on Do YouTube. I don't know what he didn't say what, but he said that we can't. I'm, you know, we need. I need to get uh, well. So hopefully that's that's. How old is not, he? He's up there. Oh, he's up there. Very, very, yeah. Is he? Yeah. Oh so, well, now that's him. Yeah, he's about, he's only he's sixty seven. Sixty seven. Okay, uh, that's up there. Uh, it says that he had to cancel his summer tour for yeah. urge, undergo yeah. back and hip surgery. Okay. Uh, okay. That's, severe pain. Ah, all right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's not good, but that's not like you know, dot is dying. So yeah, I didn't. All he did was say I'm not well, and, and well, that's all I heard. Yeah. Two days. two days ago, it had been two weeks since his heart surgery. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, yes. So oh. anytime you have heart surgery, buddy, what that's me. Yeah. yeah. You know so what? I had mine hard. removed. I have no heart. Ha ha. Ha ha. You know that. <laughs> what are you the grateful gym. dude? What do you got for? Uh, Okay. Number two, right? We had two? And yeah, we're at two, two. And I'm going to probably piss off Look a lot of day two. Please, no hate mail. I don't Stop. need it. Stop. Okay. Jeff. Guys, I know his address. Okay. Anybody who wants to send Jeff hate mail, just email me up. Okay. <laughs> I know where he lives. If you want to send Jeff hate mail, he will send you back a postcard with the scenery around his house, and then you'll all feel bad and maybe even worse. <laughs> Pictures of Everett is laid in the lawn. So, <laughs> okay, guys. So I will be honest with you. This is my either my number one or number one and a half. Number one and number two are interchangeable. Okay. They're so okay. good. I find this the best album of the year. I also find this guitarist hmm. has to be, in my opinion, and only in my opinion, the best person that's ever from a guitar. Joe Bonasama? No. <laughs> John Abasama? Joe Obama? I've seen him nine times. He was not he a president. And this guy is beyond awesome. I mean, this guy knows how to play a guitar. Um, I'm talking about Tav Shmahal. Okay. 
Taj Mahal, uh, the album is Savoy, and he went a little off kilter with this. He uh, normally is known for blues mm -hmm. and blues rock and those kind of things, but he uh, decided to dabble a little bit in swing and stuff, and the album's just intense. Uh, I've listened to it about 10 times since I found it. Wow. And it, as I said, if you ever get a chance, he's still actively too. Oh, yeah. He'll be, mm -hmm. be in Albany in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, the man is just, what he can do with his fingers, I can't even believe. Oh, it. I'll it's have to meet him. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> ew. Ew. Oh, yeah. Not out next week. <laughs> he's in your age category, too. <laughs> yeah, his, his oh, album got, got really well, uh, good acclaim. Well, you know, it, it's he has the ability. There's no way. This well, he's man done do things in the past because he's he morphs with everybody. He's been with. Uh, Who hasn't uh, been with? Um, oh my God, Santana. He, you know. Oh and, really? Yeah. So he's, he was he, with the band. Man, with Santana. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on and on. Anybody is privileged to let him. Them it might be the. Him. He might be the. Uh, oh my God, McLaughlin of of uh, uh, of. He's of, a he's a living legend. Yeah. The guy eighty one years old. Yeah. Yeah. See, the guy See is, Jeff, this is the rabbit hole kind of thing that we are talking about. That would be great. Yeah, this would be a good date for you, too. <laughs> okay. But does he wear a bucket on his head? Wait a minute. You can't. I know. You already have an M. You got to get another one. <laughs> Dams. Got to be dating S. Uh, Satriani. Okay. <laughs> Bami Sama. <laughs> Mr. Bas Yo. No, I think it's Alice's turn. Oh, yeah. Alex. Alex, Alex, Mark, Alex. you're wrong. Sure, forget me. Mark's uh, wrong. Well, torch is out. <laughs> I've been wrong Coach less than some of you tonight. I like yeah. it. Very so good. my number two, I talked earlier about it better be good if it comes towards the end of 2022 and into 2023. And this one, I never thought I would put this band as a top five artist of any countdown in my list ever. Ooh, I got Lighting Up the Sky by Godsmack. Wow. wow! Really? It's a good record. This record was probably. I did that one too. It, it was probably the most sentimental that I've ever heard them in terms of their writing actually meaning something, especially knowing that this is what they plan to be their last recorded album, and after this they just want to be basically a greatest hits touring band. Mm -hmm. um, you really, especially towards the end of the album it almost feels like a final resting for them in terms of how they talk about their career as the songs. Um, especially after putting out some real heavy, hard, good tracks in the beginning of the album. It, it's like the final season of your favorite show. And you you get the beginning where there's a plot. And while the plot concludes, you have all the reminiscing and all the uh, sentimentality of the band. And you get that in the end of this album. So to hear it from them was surprising. It's a band I can't believe that i forgot that i've seen uh in my in my past so these guys um it was a grateful album on their part and uh i never thought i would put godsmack in a top five for me ever that's great though saw yeah. them at the fun house in lackawanna <laughs> oh my and god they invited everybody back to their two bus party fun house. <laughs> everybody to their true busted party <laughs> and then i saw them at darien lake for crew fest they were the second to last <laughs> band to motley crew <laughs> crew <laughs> man there were some people there that were not ready for, for God's man. that was also the first show wherever i first ever saw a pair of tits oh, oh. nice just a pair live okay live <laughs> it's alive you know what it wasn't the bare naked ladies <laughs> no but i think <laughs> that's where that's where you think you'd see them yeah that's true <laughs> jeff Okay, Jeff. That's okay. I'll repeat myself. I said it was <laughs> Pages from Big Wreck. Okay. Now, oh, I know there's only yeah. six tracks on here, but when you consider the fact that most albums that have more than more than six, you'd be lucky to get six tracks if you like. All six tracks I do like on this, so that's why I picked it. 30-some minutes, too. Still not. It's a long record, really. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing like, uh, um, I don't say, I almost said Chris Cornell. He's t, t, he's not he's not Chris Cornell, but he's damn close. Uh, Are they Canadian? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, from the Lee Thornley, Ian Thornley. Great pick, great pick. 
It's my turn. It is your turn. Yeah, but I'm revisiting a pick already. That's okay. It was Jeff Young's pick. Which pick? Foo Fighters. Oh, was Chris. it you or was it you? Who did Foo it Fighters? Was not. It was I did Jeff. it. You did Foo Fighters. Yeah. Okay. So what about it? Um, Foo Fighters. It was, it was emotional for me, um, because of them coming back after Taylor died and just what that meant to the group, especially mm -hmm. um, Dave Grohl going through the whole scenario of what happened with Kurt Cobain and having to reflect back on what that all felt like. Mm -hmm. And me, I have a personal experience with that in my life as my son having succumbed to an overdose. And I give kudos to the band coming back and not just coming back, but writing songs and singing about it and letting other people feel their pain, but not in a morose way. It was still beautiful music. And I didn't feel bad when I was listening to it. I was a little afraid at first, like, oh, this is going to be depressing. It wasn't, it, it was hopeful, mm -hmm. but it was, it was them going, you know, we can't just put a bandaid on things and look away they actually had a responsibility. They felt that they had a responsibility to him as a bandmate, as a person. But in the end, when somebody is succumbed to that, how much is your responsibility or what you can actually do to save that person? Mm -hmm. You're only a human. Mm -hmm. And saying, I got to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. This person is gone. This was their choice. And I listened to all of the songs on that album in that vein, not just the ones that were obvious. And now they can move on and they will be who they are, I think, and evolve into something else and not be stuck back with what they had to deal with. with that. Yeah. So that was important for me in 2023. It's been seven years since Chris passed away and Mark knows that we engage in a lot of things every day to make a world a better place for people that are going through that, their families, and to see people on this level where money is of no object and they still feel that pain yeah. like the rest of us is very humanizing and makes you feel like you connect with them. So that's well why said. I chose that one. Yeah. Well said. Cool. Pooper is getting a lot of love. Oh, and they're coming to our show next, yeah, sure. week. next week. Yeah, rolls on. Rolls so... on. <laughs> Fill her up. <laughs> That's all uh, European. Yeah. Bathroom break. He's Euro Euro he's, but he's European. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I have Was that Mark's evil scientist laugh? Yes. <laughs> <he was. laughs> Well, we've got noises from the lab over here, so. You told me you need like three of mine. Okay. Have you been? I, I well, when you said that, Quattro stuck out, uh, KT Tunstall, still, because I, I know you want to see her. My other one immediately went in my head was Cowboy Junkies. Well, anyway. <laughs> she rolls around. So... Yeah. This well, is not the dating game, folks. <laughs> it might be. So this one I went with is government mule oh east like a river or oh. has anybody heard it here? yeah it's so number 20 yeah i know it's on your list maybe it's pingies but yeah is um, that the most popular list out of all of us yeah who does what thanks oh but anyway if you haven't heard it it's definitely worth a listen i'm not super familiar with government mule but they have an awesome sound um it, it kind of takes you back to like classic rock blues, um, but it, it's like you know it's good for today. Uh, it's it's just a nice blend, and great guitar riffs. The drum is awesome. There's mm. horns, mm -hmm. which I love when they introduce horns. Um, there's some keyboard going on. There's a lot of vocalists. I don't know them. Like there's a lot. There's a lot of guest. Oh yeah. Vocalists on it. So. Um, but it's a really well produced, well put together album, um, and yeah, I, that's great. That's 
I'm gonna listen. It's good. Yeah, sure. Warren Haynes. That's that's an out of the park record. It wasn't as typical as you would expect government mule to be, and and uh, yeah, well produced record. <clears throat> did he have you watch, listen to it, or no, did you just find it? Part, it? No, just... We, but we were talking about them the other day, and so I went back and listened to it. And nice. So yeah. it's also, uh, I believe, it would have been on uh, Jeff Crichton's list of best albums. So, uh, he, nice. He he chimed in on when I released that statement. Cool. So um, uh, another honorable mention, if you like prog rock, uh, done kind of the not in the old old school way, but a, a new modern version of the old school. I know that sounds weird. Yeah. I would check out Haken, H A K E N, mm, um, Haken, the album Haken. Fauna, F A U N A. Um, they are probably right now the prog rock standard prog rock kind of band. But you need to really get well. albums that are easier to easier yeah yeah easier to say <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. wait wait to hear number one no um. <laughs> Anyway, I'll take it back to Everett for his number one record album of the year. On, I have man. a feeling. Woo, woo, a rocking and a real. I, first, I just got to say, all the odd ones that you picked, Mark, like, I feel like the way you got these names was you spilled a game of Scrabble. Yeah, that's <laughs> all the leftover letters. Yeah, all, all the leftover yeah. letters. And there's even a couple, like, eight-pointers in there. And... <laughs> eight-pointers. What did you got? Dihydromana hydrosilicide. Oh, oh yes. No. God bless yeah. you. Yeah. Great it. album. No. Excuse so you? for, like, for my like, number like, one album, I anybody I really... who knows me, I think you know what I'm gonna pick. Yes. I picked Jimmy Buffett's Equal yeah. Strain on All Parts album. I mean wow. how that, could I not? I don't, so very cool. good album. I think it's his best, but that's but I have not out of Every that is the album music, whatever that's come out this year that I have listened to the most by like a factor of 10. I swear, a factor, you know? factor of 10. Everything else I've listened to like two hours of that's like 20. Wow, wow. so wow. I mean, I it's, it's kind of funny because I think that it's. The two albums that came out last, Life on the Flip Side and Equal Strain on All Parts, I almost feel like they should be switched. Like, really? as far... Yeah. Because to me, Life on the Flip Side gives off this very much kind of like farewell vibe. Like, it's been great. You know, he sings about how much he's like, how thankful he is for, you know, being able to just get out there with his guitar on stage and people love love him for it right and he right. sings a lot about that in the, not the new album the one that just came out this year but the mm -hmm. one before it and this album was not that at all it came in and it was classic jimmy buffett which i mean you know it was classic jimmy buffett but very different it was you know was it same it wasn't samey, you know, sure. and that is one thing that I will, I just can't call him, you know, if you listen to some of his, you know, like his big, like the big eight, like come Monday, cheeseburger and paradise fans, they all get a little bit similar after a while, even I'll admit that. But if you actually go in and you listen to not just the big ones, he's got a lot of variety. I mean, he's got everything from on this one album to like jazz swinging big band walking down new orleans really to, like rocking fish like songs literally titled and i am not joking you called fish porn oh not song. as bad as you think it is but it's also that is just like That's surfer meet, surfer you? rock <laughs> and a Bob Dylan cover and a country song cover that I forget the guy who did it. It's like Bill Cunning or something. He's the one that did like uh, what is it? Good Directions or something like in the early 2000s. Okay. <clears throat> and you know, and Bubbles Up, which I kind of like. There's three songs. I think you got Pyro Looks at 40, a song called Tides off of the Song from Saint Somewhere album, and this and Bubbles Up that all kind of make this perfect trio of just you know gives you a general idea like of his story 
So for my number three, uh, it's got to be that. You know, there's just one. number one. For my number three, two, and one, it's that. One. <laughs> That's a good save, buddy. Sue's <laughs> tired. We can go back. Yep. And if you, you shouldn't have said it was a save. Come on. I I was rolling with it, man. Okay. Enough with the Roman numerals. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Gosh. Roman numerals. Okay. I'm underappreciated. Oh, no. there's I I I I I I I G D V I V I. So that is mine. What is your number one? Okay, you know the problem with being as old as I am and getting older by the day <laughs> is that a lot of the people that I grew up loving and no. my wheelhouses are either dead or close to dead. <laughs> You're gonna say that. Dead. Easy, Benjamin Button. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's funny. I don't really gravitate to new music very often. And Mark turned me on to this lady probably six months ago or so. And she's all that in a bucket of potatoes. <laughs> as, she, as she says about the kitchen. <laughs> huh. That's an interesting saying. I like made, it. He just Keep made going, it Jeff. I love it. The album is You're the One. The artist is Rihanna Giddens. Rihanna Giddens. Oh, yeah. She, she is, I went back and listened to everything I could get from her. On the plane ride over, I listened to four hours of her. She just, she just mm -hmm. does something for me. Man, this lady mm -hmm. can play. You know, not, and, you know, she's gifted with a beautiful voice, but she can also play guitar mm -hmm. very, very well. Yeah. Fiddle. I, the fiddle, yeah. The fiddle, uh, violin. Plays the fiddle and the violin mm -hmm. and the guitar. I'm surprised by that with you. Well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm, it, it because my, my roots go to the blues. Yeah. You know, my roots mm -hmm. go to the blues yep. and her roots are in the blues. Definitely. You know, um, you know, a lot of the artists that I grew up with mm -hmm. are very much bluesy. Yeah. And the dead are bluesy. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, they are. So, no, it's very much wheelhouse. It's just, so exciting to find somebody who's still producing new music that's that still has the old funk. Yeah. It yeah. still it still, you know, tells you that that the music you grew up in her still songs alive. told stories too. All, all sure. good songs yeah. should tell stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and most of the music I listen to tells scary stories, yep. not just a bunch of bah, 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 bah. you know, it, yeah. it, it doesn't do it for me. Mm -hmm. So nice. But no. Number one with a bullet, baby. She's, she's a great album. Great album. Nice. But number one for the year. Great pick. She is, um, if, I don't know if you've gone down that rabbit hole, <laughs> but <laughs> um, the uh, T-Bone Burnett brought yes. together um, El Elvis Costello, uh, Jim James from My Morning Jacket, yeah. the guy from The Dawes, and uh, Rihanna Giddens, and even Johnny Depp. Sat in to play bass. Oh, that's right. Um, it's and they redid the songs from Pink, right? Uh, that were not written, that were not finished from from that. Mm -hmm. So they called it the New Basement Tapes. Oh. That's the name of the album and the band. Really? And uh, if you want, I I love the record. It, some parts of it. Uh, oh, sorry, leaving out um, Mark Knopfler. No, 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 no. <laughs> like uh, Mumper. Oh, okay. Bumper yeah, songs, guys. leaving him off. Yeah, That's you, a shame. You, That's you, a shame because his songwriting on there is the best. You did all. talk about him, and uh, his versions of song, his his make and take are are the best part. But watch the D, watch the documentary on it because really? it's it's kind of moving in a way because they're getting together to do this and they're they're each excited about doing it because it's T Bone Burnett. It's it's kind of nostalgia from from that yeah. era, right? Yeah. And they're getting to meet each other and and they know the music of that and they, but. Mumford didn't realize that you were supposed to kind of write some of them before you got there. <laughs> and he when he got it, there, he, he panics. He he, he's actually like, they're like, where is he? He's like, I think he's out writing some things in the hallway. <laughs> and he did. Down, yeah, he was but at, then his, he did. And his were amazing. And, and, and they're all good. I mean, yeah. Anyway, That's good. So that, I, I love that. Uh, Alex. Uh, <clears throat> so this album came out six days after my birthday this year, Ooh, themed around yeah. heartache and healing. And this album hit a massive chord with me. 
Uh, Mark can probably predict it now as soon as I say that. Uh, I talked about this album a lot this year, and I coincidentally just to ensure it was my number one, listened to it on the drive over today. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is uh, The Love Still Held Me Near by City and Color. Oh, um, this, and I know this is in Dallas Green's wheelhouse where his solo stuff is a lot more of him writing songs when he's bummed out and feels better in the process of doing so. Um, there's so many ways in which the writing process of this album and, and some of the things that have gone around it have tied into each other and, and even parts of my life. And um, ironically enough, too, hearing um, hearing the music with the visuals that have come out around this album, so from YouTube and watching the visual album with it and then watching an acoustic performance he did this year that was recorded um, – professionally for tv that featured probably 90 percent this album and 10 percent some of the other things that he's done in the past as his solo act of city and color um all those things just moved me closer to the album um not only from an audio standpoint but a visual standpoint so uh yeah that takes my number one this year it's a great choice because not only they city and color has always been a more Dallas Green bandish, in my opinion. But their blues, the way they handle it, it it's well done. Um, not not my favorite of their records. I, the, the two prior ones have a, have a little bit more meat on the bone, maybe, I guess you'd say. But yeah, that, that came out at a really good time where music, there wasn't a lot going on that had that had meaning. It was that they're just popping out stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was a good mix. And of course, I think um, the other band, uh, come on oh um alexis on, fire. On fire. alexis on fire i always say arcade fire wrong alexis on fire their record came out before that yeah yeah before that last year that was really good and that was a different version that dallas green had a hand on and he's, he's a musical and, and honestly we joked about it in the last episode about the rabbit hole and an argument with that but if you ever want to go down a great rabbit hole just start on the wikipedia city and color and go have fun or just look up Dallas Green um, and go dive into some of his past projects with you and me and and Alexis on Fire, and you can just stem off from there. Yeah, I've never Alexis on Fire. Always like that. This was the first band, the first time around. That I was like, you know, I really like fun tie in there. I, I cook. I bring people together and cook a lot, and they were always playing in the background. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mister Young, uh, I picked Seventy Two Seasons by Metallica, and uh. you know. It's awesome because as old as they are and as long as they've been around, they still give you an album with 12 tracks on it. And I, the first time I heard um, Darkness Had a Son was on Jimmy Kimmel because they had did a full week where they would play a, a song. And not always new songs because they played a couple older ones, but they played all week. And I'm just like, man, like, like every time you hear a new album is coming out from Metallica, there's always you know, some chatter about, okay, this is where they jump off the cliff, and they, they just never do. Yep. No, they, solid album, really good. I, if I was in the, the only thing I would say is sometimes it's a little long. I was about the to say, they're, they're still hitting those long. lengthy tracks. Yeah, I do love the group. I mean, that first song is killer, and uh, it sets the tone, and I still don't know how Lars continues to play the drums i know like that his I, elbows should be i get i get exhausted <laughs> watching it and i cramp up right it's, I, it's true crazy it's so, true. well i saw an interview with him where he said you know it, it, it's tough with the music collection now because as he's much older than he ever was before he yeah. said a lot of those earlier songs are are extremely exhausting and yeah. you're there to do a whole show you know yeah. Yeah. Just one 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 song itself can be exhausting, you know, at this age when he could compare to when he can do it when he's younger. You know that he's not faking. You want to know how? Because you'll know because yeah. if he's fat, then you're like, because he probably burns 7,000 calories. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. That's how he stays in he shape. He's like a, a whole cattle that. beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> You're amazed, you're amazed he's even exhausted anymore. You think he built up a tolerance of it. That's his baseline now. But yeah. Your body breaks down. Wait, you're only 30, yeah. right? Uh, okay. Just Give don't, 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 don't remind me. Yeah. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. I, I just, you too I, could look like this someday. 
<laughs> All right, my number, number one. my number one is very predictable. It's it's Peter Gabriel Io. Um, that that album, I don't listen to a lot of music over and over and over again. I listen to talk radio a lot, and after I listened to that for we did the review on a Saturday. I listened to it four times or whatever. I've listened to it another 10 times. And I'll stand by the fact that that is one of the most talented men in music ever. He evolves, but stays true to himself. You always know it's Peter Gabriel, but it's not the same. His voice is amazing. I'm interested that Everett picked John Mellencamp because Peter Gabriel to me still has that same voice that even in Lamb lies down in Broadway you can still hear him being in that young state but it has transformed not just gotten old so for me he is an individual in song and singing and delivery who has never put himself in a position of making a, a vertical line or a melody that he couldn't sing. Yes. Okay. Yep. And I think a lot of people stretch and they yes. build and they go for the big thing and they yeah. can't Barbara Streisand. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're still pulling off things today, but he has always been a storyteller Yes. in a very different realm. He's a poet. He's a, he's a key. Yes. He's a keyboard player. Yeah. He's not an aficionado. He knows what he wants in his ear. Would would you put him, you know, Bach and no, no, well, no, but he has his no one does Peter Gabriel. No one. And and when he goes to do a record, Not easy. Uh, people uh, that are on that record, Mano Kache and and uh, Brian Eno, and mm-hmm. I mean they they wanted to work with him. He didn't call them and go, hey, listen, you want to they no, went, they're looking and Mano Kache has always been with him in turn, but then that's the connection with Brian uh, or with uh, Daniel and Law. But because he brought him in when they were doing so, he just said, mm-hmm. "Come in." Yeah, I, I, it's a, it's a brilliant record. It really is, and and to have three different sounding boards to that, and I I obviously I don't have the stereo system, whatever the hell it's called, that he did the the other version in. That's yeah. like so it'll blow your you know it'll shred your house, uh, or it'll it'll suck you into the song and you, mm-hmm. you're gone like like fucking poltergeist. But it's mm-hmm. it's it's amazing. It came out in December. It's unfair. It came out in singles all year. I think that was a horrible decision. It was. Because that album, those songs, I never listened to them. Thank God I didn't because I, I watched people online that said, eh, 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 eh. I don't even know how you get eh, eh, any of it. It's brilliant. And for anybody to say it's not brilliant, it doesn't even, that the musically, they don't understand music. And also, you know, we've watched somebody like Phil Collins, 73 years yeah. old, that it's, it's pain it's painful um him he still is the musician he's always been and better Mm -hmm. and his songwriting like i said he's a poet and you can tell in his 70s he's reflecting on things and i think i said in our album review the last the last song was live and let live Mm -hmm. and sometimes we get to a point in our life like there's no reason to keep fighting about this other stuff. Right. Live and let live. It happened. It is what it is. And be at peace. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. So that was my song. I oh. I and, was very connected. To and it. because I love disappointing you, I constantly mix up Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins all the time. You can't uh, though. That's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> how is that even possible? <laughs> I don't know how it happens. It just does. Well. Well, you and Don Henley over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, I owe, I owe. It's off the awesome we, we go. <laughs> I still love you. It's a weird mix-up. Though. I don't know saying. how I do it. I just do. Who's next? So, um, my number one is Such Ferocious Beauty. Oh. Cowboy Junkies. Yeah, uh, that was one that we we did. We did on the show. 
I wanted to pick one that we did on the show for sure, but um, it's just a strong, powerful album. The songs, you know, I hate to even think about that 2020 year, mm. but um, but it it did inspire <laughs> a lot of things, and it's I think it's going to continue to inspire a lot of things to come. Um, and the fact of the the father and the dementia and dealing with that and the loss, um, mm. they did. Uh, I think they did a good job of, of packing it on, bringing it, bringing it to life. Not, um, you know, it's hard to share something like that where it's not all about you yeah, and they can share it and kind of not a teachable moment, but Fascinating. yeah. Yeah. And so they just did a nice job and it's good music and they've been around a long time. They have. So yeah, it's a little, little deeper too on, in sound and patterns. And you, you listen to headphones, there's a lot more going yeah. on. They had, Over the years, they've gotten extremely good at depth of music. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the one brother who does most of the songwriting, he, he's he's really up there. Um, it's a good choice. Uh, excellent choice. I, it's good to hear that uh, a lot of these came from uh, panelist favorites yeah. discussion. I, I don't hold people that they have to do that. So my final honorable mention <laughs> is... Not that odd, but it's odd to me that no one's talking about this band. Uh -oh. Because technically, if you're in love with Fle Fleetwood Mac and you're upset by everything else that goes on with that band, uh, I don't know why you're not listening to The Paper Kites and their new album At The Roadhouse. Australian band. You... Sounded what? like you almost said Fleetwood Mac. I was like, Fleetwood Mac? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was what? I Have can't I wait to see that album cover that's just a, a wooden foot with a box of Kraft mac and cheese. Again, <laughs> if you love a Big Mac and some french fries, now, <laughs> um, I, I did review this. I wanted to look and see so I could give you the Go look at uh, album review Saturday, uh, uh, number 25. I was just blown away that it's it's so in that wheelhouse and their their attention to their harmonies are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and they're so uh, not known. Uh, but give me more. What are they saying? Like, what is their kind? What do they do? It's 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 Fleetwood Mac. It's low. It's really? country folk rock. Got it it. Had, it has that. So my my got some strong. This album in feels it. good. Hurt so good. Yes, yeah, song uh, more like song. a Juice Newton. Yes, and the tempered Juice it, Newton. There, there's a like a cuddling effect. There's tempting and flirtingness to it. The lyrics and melodies. Think of like um, Calexico meets Blue Rodeo. Oh, okay. um, or, you know, there is a tightness that you might, might put in the wheel of a band that had Don Henley in it and had uh, certain band members in it from the Eagles. Oh. So that this is that yeah, type of music that should a generation should be like if yeah. you're looking and going um I, you're, you never say this by the way and it's like, oh, i'm tired of listening to that band i get it you're not but yeah. if you want to like go and like wow this would be a wonderful choice in that car. so cool. nice uh, our final you know panelist favorites show and i want to thank all the panelists uh jeff Crichton couldn't join us tonight he, he was he's a director of a, a play going on at this time so he's but, more important than us well he's saying. had some things he bit. had to do right so okay. i, I, right. I, I that jerk. Uh, we I mean, are for on, yes we're yeah. on the web at <laughs> beyondyourradio.com because i'm not wwwing anymore <laughs> because that's just passe yeah. <laughs> so yesterday but we will uh we'll see you next year happy new year favorites. everybody happy new year catch us it's coming <laughs> meal to music <gasps> new year's eve we're putting on, it'll be the American Dream album by Cosby, Stills, Nash & Young, The Grateful Dude, and, and I will put this on. The whole menu, you'll get to see it. You'll get to experience some of the video. Obviously, trying to take the whole thing while cooking and putting it on would be, in, would be an insane attempt. My house is not big enough to do this, but uh, we're looking forward to that. Yes, again, have a happy new year and happy listening. Bye. Bye.